Welcome, and thanks for participating in this overview of birds and artificial light at night. Uh, my name is John Roden, and I'm here with Connie Sanchez, and we're glad that you were able to watch this video. So Connie and I sit on the Bird Friendly Communities team at the National Audubon Society, and on our team we work to, to provide food, shelter, safe passage, and places to raise young with the Audubon Network across the United States. Today, we're particularly talking about the safe passage aspect of bird-friendly communities work. And why is this important? Uh, we are particularly interested in the science and the application of science to conservation action. How do we protect birds moving through an increasingly hazardous airspace? Now, this slide shows that there are numerous hazards to birds uh, that are navigating through our built environment. During this presentation, we are particularly focusing on the impact of light. And we wanna share some research that's helped identify where should we, we should be focusing our efforts on addressing artificial light at night to help migratory birds. Why is this important? As we look at birds across the globe, about 19% uh, of birds are migratory. And here in North America, that, that number is actually quite a bit higher at 70%. Of those migratory species in North America, about 80% migrate at night. And we think there are a few reasons for this, although this is an active area of research. Uh, clearly migratory flight is energetically expensive and it's cooler at night. So if you're gonna actually fly long distances, expending a lot of energy, it makes sense to do it during the cooler part of the day. Interestingly, uh, raptors generally migrate during the day and take advantage of thermals. So if you want to avoid flying at the same time as potential predators, flying at night makes sense. And also there's the ability that birds have to take advantage of the light in the sky that occurs naturally. So the star map, the moon, and use that for navigational purposes. They have evolved with that and that is a steady source of information for them to help them navigate by. Of course, with the advent of artificial light at night over the past 150 years or so, massive amount of light is then brought, has being broadcast into the sky, which compromises that ability of them to fly through the night. And just to illustrate that, I wanted to share a brief example about the tribute in light, which is, uh, a memorial to the lives lost on 9-11 that happens every September 11th in New York City, where two beams of light are shown into the sky, are, are broadcast into the sky uh, as a memorial. It happens during fall migration. And this is a photograph I took actually from the rooftop where the lights are broadcast into the sky. And those little specks are actually birds that are attracted to that light because again, they use light as a navigational source and that does seem to attract them. This is uh, data that was from a paper from, and from 2017 by Van Dorn et al, which actually shows on the left, that is a, a, a map of birds that, are tr that were transiting through the night sky without the lights being broadcast into the sky. And on the right, it's 20 minutes later when the lights were on. And you can see those warmer colors indicate a higher density of birds. And it really does act as sort of a beacon, that light, and draws birds in. And they seem to become disoriented and unable to actually navigate their way out of it. Of course, our chapter in New York City, the New York City Audubon Society, partners with the producers of that tribute and has the ability to turn off lights, those lights, if birds are actually trapped in the beams and allow them to disperse. So that's a win for that, but it just, use, it, it just illustrates how powerful that attraction can be for birds. So just thinking about the research again that's being done on this, we actually have the ability to, to determine the number of birds that are flying through the uh, airspace taking advantage of weather surveillance radar. There's a, a network of 143 stations across the country that were designed to actually uh, look at weather radar, weather patterns, but can use, be used to identify bird 
movements as well. And these, this uh, figure is taken from a paper by Van Doren and Horton um, from 2018, which illustrates that. And that can then lead to this sort of map. This is the bird cast map that's produced by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, which takes those types of weather radar data and creates a map which shows the amount of birds, the migration intensity that is occurring across the country at any particular time. Now, taking that research a little bit farther, uh, Van, uh, Horton et al. published a paper in 2019, which actually looked at both the, the number of birds that were flying through the airspace during spring and fall migration and overlaid that on the map of light that's being projected into the sky across the country. And that, what they, that allowed them to do was to calculate an exposure risk. So where you have high numbers of birds transiting through the environment and you have high amounts of light that are being broadcast into the sky, that indicates where birds are most at risk from the amount of artificial light that's being broadcast. And this slide shows the top 10 cities that uh, aggregately broadcast the most amount of light and have the most birds flying through the airspace uh, during spring and fall migration. So you can see uh, there's a number in the middle part of the country and also the coasts as well. And that corresponds with where large numbers of birds are flying through the landscape. And what we've used this scientific research to do is help us focus work on where we want to actually institute programs that can diminish the amount of light that's being broadcast into the sky to help birds on their migratory journey. So that's what I want to share with you. And I'm going to pass this over to Connie now, who's going to talk a little bit more about Audubon programs. Thanks, John. Now, Audubon's Lights Out program is a national effort to address this problem that John talked about, this artificial light at night um, negatively affecting these birds. So with this program, Audubon chapters, centers, state offices, and partners on the ground are working with building managers and owners to turn off excess lighting during the months that these birds are migrating overhead. Um, and we're helping them provide safe passage between their nesting and wintering grounds. So as John mentioned, turning off these bright lights helps birds move on within minutes as we um, saw in the 9-11 Memorial study um, in New York City. So taking more steps to decrease the amount of light that these buildings are giving off really can minimize unnecessary bird deaths while at the same time saving money by reducing energy consumption. So here you've got a graphic of um, our newly launched Lights Out Philly program, which just started this year in 2021. And this was prompted by a mass bird collision event that occurred um, last fall. So a number of organizations came together working with us to develop this program and it was just launched. Next slide. Now, much of this work that we talk about relies on partnerships. Recently, Audubon formalized a partnership with the International Dark Sky Association, IDA, an organization that's already been focusing on reducing light pollution and has a lot of expertise in this area. So now as Audubon staff and chapters and partners on the ground have been working to understand and mitigate the impacts that artificial light has on birds, they are now combining forces and collaborating with a network of um, International Dark Sky Association chapters and affiliates working jointly to protect the night from artificial light. Here's what our Lights Out Network looks like as best as we understand. The Fatal Light Awareness Program in Toronto, FLAP, was the first to raise awareness of the problem that lights pose for birds in an urban area starting in 1993. And in 1999, Audubon and partners established the first Lights Out Program in Chicago. Since then, groups in many other cities, as you can see here, have organized programs to make a difference for birds. So the yellow circles that you see on this map show where Lights Out programs include International Dark Sky Association partners in these efforts. And note that some of these programs you see here aren't implemented by Audubon entities, but rather we're working with various partners in some of these cities. And also, as I mentioned, this is our best understanding of the programs on the ground. 
Um, but if you're working on a lights out program and you don't see your dot represented, please do reach out to us. We're currently working on developing a more comprehensive map to highlight our efforts across the country. Now, a number of jurisdictions across the country have pursued efforts to address light pollution, and policy change is increasingly a focus of Audubon's efforts across the network. So if any of you are interested in this, please do reach out to us as we've been working to build the tools and the resources to help implement this on the ground focused on this front. So what can you do as an individual? Start at home. Think about your own windows. Think about where you might have excess lighting or where sensors would make sense. Share what you know and try to raise awareness. Talk with your neighbors, your friends, schools, your businesses and community leaders, and find out what's happening locally to see if there are opportunities to get involved. Do talk to your decision makers and those with influence and advocate for berg friendly legislation and collaborate with those in the building and design industry if those opportunities are available. And for more information, you can go online on audubon.org and explore more about our berg friendly buildings and our lights out programs online. And Seek out your Audubon chapters or your centers if they are nearby and uh, take a look at what the offices, the state offices and regional offices are doing and find opportunities to get involved. Thank you. Thanks for joining and thanks for all of the work that you're doing.